In this video, let's talk about Fortescue Metals Group and whether they are a great dividend stock. I'll cover what I look for in a great dividend stock, their financials, and then I'll wrap up the video with their valuation. If you learn something new, consider gently smashing that like button right there. And as usual, this video is not financial advice by any means. So without further ado, let's go. As of recording this video, FMG is trading at $16.08 with $49.51 billion worth of market capitalization. Now, FMG is the fourth largest iron ore producer after BHP, Rio Tinto, and Vail. Now, Vail is a Brazilian producer, and majority of the iron ore production is actually done in Australia. FMG's share price reached an all-time high at $19.30 after iron ore prices rallied to more than $120 per ton. And iron ore prices grew substantially post-pandemic, mostly because of the unbelievable demand coming from China. Not to mention, Brazil, the world's second largest iron ore producer, was severely impacted during the pandemic. Just imagine, 21% of the world's iron ore supply is impacted. That gives incredible leverage to the Australian producers. As Brazil recovered from the pandemic, it's reasonable to assume that the iron ore prices will correct slightly with more supply in the market. But the main risk to iron ores is not exactly a supply problem, but more so towards a demand problem. The question is, will China's insatiable hunger for iron ore continue on for the next couple of years? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But for now, all of our Australian producers are experiencing great iron ore prices. That's the macro environment backdrop. So the next question is, is FMG a great dividend stock? When it comes to great dividend stocks, I keep things very simple and I look for three main things. I want to know whether their earnings are growing. I want to know whether they have a strong balance sheet. And I want to know whether they have an economic moat that will defend them from competition in the future. Now, from an earnings growth perspective, over the last five years, FMG have grew their earnings by 40.5%. That is absolutely incredible. And of course, they have benefited from the strong iron ore demand and prices in 2020. With their balance sheet, from a single glance, you could tell that the short-term assets well cover the short-term liabilities. So they really shouldn't have any issues dealing with external shocks in the short term. I'll comment more about this in the valuation section in just a second. The debt to equity ratio is currently at 0.32, which means that for every $1 of equity, there is 32 cents of debt, which is incredibly safe at the moment. Along with almost 5 billion US dollars worth of cash, FMG certainly has a strong balance sheet. When it comes to economic mode, it comes in different forms and sizes. For Coca-Cola, it's all about the brand and the cost advantage of being such a massive company. For a company like Facebook, it's all about the network effect, where the product experience actually gets better as more of your family and friends sign up to use their service. With FMG's economic mode, it's best shown if I put them side by side with other iron ore producers. And along the way, I'm going to comment on their valuation as well. With this spreadsheet, everything is in millions and everything is in US dollars. Bear in mind that BHP and Rio Tinto are companies at a different stage of their business life cycle. And they are not pure iron ore producers like FMG. Let's start off with their operating margins. Out of the three iron ore producers, Fortescue Metals Group, have an operating margin of almost 54%, giving them a lot more room to manage fluctuating iron ore prices. On top of that, FMG's return on capital employed have improved by 65% compared to three years ago. And it seems like they are just now reaping the benefits of their investments. When it comes to return on capital employed, the way to understand this is that for every $1 of capital employed, FMG is returning 33.4 cents. If we compare that with the other two iron ore producers, for every $1 of capital employed, they are returning 16.8 cents to about 16.7 cents. What you're really looking for with this metric is just how efficiently is the company deploying the capital and what returns are they getting from the capital they deploy. 
This is a very similar story with return on equity. For every $1 of equity, Fortescue Metals Group is returning 35.8 cents. Now, the main difference between these two metrics is that return on capital employed takes into account debt plus equity as well, whereas return on equity is only looking at the efficiency of the company's ability to deploy shareholder equity. With a superior operating margin, return on capital employed, and return on equity, I think it's a fair observation to say that one of Fortescue Metal's economic moat lies in their superior processes. And the metrics are just a result of a great process. So let's keep moving down the sheet. The current ratio for FMG as of recording the video is 2.25, which means that for $1 worth of current liabilities, there is $2.25 worth of current assets. Again, I just want to emphasize that in the short term, they will have very little issues dealing with external shocks. Usually with current ratio, you just want to make sure that the number is above 1.5 to 1.6 and FMG's current ratio is above and beyond. If we move further down the valuation section, you can see that FMG have one of the lowest EV to EBITDA multiple out of the three iron ore producers. And the way to interpret this multiple is that if we were to buy this business right now, how many times EBITDA do we have to pay for this business? And in this case, we are paying 4.19 times EBITDA for Fortescue Metals Group. And we're paying 9.61 times EBITDA for BHP and 10 times for Rio Tinto. Given you're paying approximately four times EBITDA to nine to 10 times EBITDA for the other two iron producers, and on top of that, FMG have a better operating margin, a better return on capital employed, and a better return on equity. I would say that it's a fair observation that at its current enterprise value, there seems to be quite a bit of value in FMG currently. On top of all of that, FMG is trading 22% below their historical PE of 10 times. So that's something to consider as well. Everything I just showed you indicates that FMG seems like a dividend stock that's really worthwhile researching more into. And the next thing I will research more into are their free cash flows, the future prospects of iron ores, and the political implications of our crappy relationship with China. But my issue with iron ore producers as a dividend stock is that the dividend payments are very lumpy and the performance of the company is at the mercy of iron ore prices. I just personally prefer dividend stocks that's less turbulent and not completely at the mercy of commodity prices. But the one thing that I think is a huge positive for FMG and doesn't get enough attention is their ownership structure. FMG is still mostly owned by founder Dr. Andrew Forrest. Tatarang is the holding company for the Forrest family's private business interests. And as of recording this video, they still own 36% of the company. And on top of that, there are multiple transactions throughout this year where he bet big on his own company. There are many reasons why founders will sell stock, but you buy stock because you expect the value of the company will be greater in the future compared to what it is right now. So what do you think? What else would you look into FMG to see whether they are a great dividend stock? Talk to me in the comment section below because I would love to know what you think. If you want access to my video script, which contains my research, the spreadsheets, and also be part of my fortnightly Q&A, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. Nonetheless, it already means the world to me that you'll watch this video this far. So if you learn something new, remember to gently smash that like button right there, subscribe to my channel, click onto the bell so that when I release future videos, you be the first one to know. As usual, Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.